Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Salvage Workshop. Today, we're gonna take a look at this old forklift. And we're gonna evaluate whether or not it's gonna be worth spending the time to fix it up. This is a Heister, model H60C, as you can see there. So the model H60C is a 7,000 pound capacity air tired unit that is currently set up to run on gas, gasoline. I've been looking for a machine this size largely for its increased ability to lift heavier loads, but more so for the fact that it can drive on gravel. And this is not a four wheel drive unit by any means, but having big old air tires on the front allow it to drive in situations like this or on my gravel driveway a heck of a lot easier than my other one. They have a little, quite a bit higher ground clearance and they just don't get stuck as easily. Yeah, let's, let's get into it. There's a couple problems. One thing I see right off the bat is all the nuts that hold the hub onto this wheel here are currently missing. So we gotta figure out what happened there or where they're at. Um, it looks like the seat's not bolted in. And yeah, that's about all I know about it. So other than the one issue under the hood that we're gonna look at now. Off the bat I see this cable that goes over to the seat plate is disconnected my guess is that's the choke for the carburetor here and so yeah the seats been off already All right, now we're gonna take a look at the issue that's most concerning to me. And that is that there are no spark plugs. In any of the cylinders. You see that? So apparently the back five cylinders are all full of dirt and mouse poop and just nastiness and this front one is also but this front one is also full of some sort of sort of liquid water something probably water and obviously if the motor's ruined it's a bigger project than I probably want to take on no battery it does have a heistomatic transmission which I assume that's an automatic because I don't see a clutch here that's your gas right there. Those two pedals that move together are the brake. And then over here on the shifter, you've got forward, neutral, reverse, and then the high and the low that won't move. So I think my plan is to pull a few more things off on the motor and just kind of take a look and see if we can figure out how bad the top of the motor is before we go any further. Take off this air cleaner. It doesn't even have a clamp on this, on the carburetor side. Over here on the air filter side, it does. It's like there was a moss nest in there. And the lip of this thing is kind of eaten up and cracked. Now you can see how much junk is in there in each one of them can you see the wetness in that cylinder and then every other one is just full of a mouse nest now this is a continental six-cylinder flathead I believe it's an f226 or 227 
based on the markings that I found. Not overly difficult motors to work on, and from what I've been told, they're actually pretty much tanks, and they can take a lot of abuse. So I don't want to turn it over with an issue like this and end up causing bigger problems down the road or, or creating problems that are avoidable. So let's try and clean it out as best we can, and then we'll evaluate from there. All right, I'm gonna take this distributor cap off, just make a little room. Under the distributor, it doesn't look terrible at all. There is some corrosion between the points, but nothing, nothing really bad to worry about. Let's focus on the cylinders. All right, so what I'm gonna start by doing is using a shop vac to suck out some of the gunk and whatnot that's in the cylinders. And so I'm gonna tape this piece of tubing right here, and I'm gonna use that initially, and then that will go around the outside of the cylinder and kind of just kind of make a seal. And then when that's done, I'll stick another piece on here, we'll tape this to it, and we can stick the this hose down into the cylinder and kind of move it around a little bit. And I have another smaller size too if I need it. So that's the plan tentatively. We'll see how it works. So I did find one of the spark plugs laying in the machine and where the other five are I have no clue but at least it gives me an idea of what plug was in it so I can buy a few more. Now one of the big things I want to figure out is why there were no spark plugs in it. My thought is they were having problems with sparks somewhere and they just never got back to it. Now having left the spark plugs out caused everything to be worse because had it had spark plugs in there. There would be no real issue other than the spark problem. Now it may have caused issues with, you know, the valves not seating right, the piston rings maybe being locked to the cylinders, walls, and we don't really know. So what I think I'm gonna do, all I have with me, some liquid wrench, silicone. I'm gonna pour it in all the cylinders, just a whole bunch. I think I'm gonna take off the radiator fan here so I can get down below and get a a socket on the actual crankshaft and see if we can get it to turn see if it moves and if it does then we'll go a little further as far as trying to chase down what the issue was oil is way over full so the full mark is right there and we're way up here now, it feels thin, it doesn't feel like water's in it, so maybe they tried something else doing the same thing and stuff leaked down, I don't know, I guess we'll figure it out. There, we got the fan out of the way. Alright, we're going to mix up some 50-50 acetone, and I know you can't read the label, but this is a... Uh, ATF, Automatic Transmission Fluid. Try and see if we can't use it to break the cylinders uh, loose. There's barely any room down there to get a socket on, so I've just got a big crescent wrench, and I'm just gonna try and rock it over a little bit, see if we can get the motor to turn at all. <laughs> we'll see, I guess.
This is why you don't take your spark plugs out when you let it sit. Looks like I'm gonna have to at least take some of the coolant out. Can't really get in there to rock the motor over very easily with the kind of the water pump pulley in the way. Get it, I just loosened the nut. Wonderful. Alright, well, I decided to take off the water pump here, which is on the side of the block, so that I can get better access to working the motor over back and forth. So I'm going to take the head off we're going to see what we see. So right now I'm working on removing the distributor. While I was cleaning and getting ready to take off this distributor, I took the nut off the little retainer plate here and I figured out exactly why they probably stopped messing with this. The distributor body is cracked. They were trying to deal with the spark issue and they were maybe thinking pull the distributor and cracked it. I could totally see that be the reason why they just abandoned the machine, gave up, couldn't get it out, and never put the spark plugs back in. So, unfortunate to run into that problem, but I don't know, I guess I'm going to have to find a distributor. Hopefully I can find one. Alright, let's take the head off. There's what it looks like underneath the head. So some of the valves, some of the valves look stuck. That one looks rough, that one looks rough, that one looks rough. So we're gonna get it all cleaned up and then we'll take another look at it. got stuff sucked out of there. There's definitely uh, rust on the cylinder walls. That's all right. We'll get it cleaned up and see what we find. Can you see how bad that looks? And that one, these two don't look too bad. This one's got some problems. This one doesn't look too bad. The valves are cleaning up somewhat. Well, <laughs> starting to look kind of good. All right, well, it is still locked up, and I believe that this cylinder and this cylinder are basically, I believe the rings are rusted to the cylinder walls. So, I mixed up some more acetone and uh, ATF, automatic transmission fluid. And we're gonna let that sit overnight, come back, and see if we can't get those rings freed from the wall. We might as well just do them all. Don't 
don't want this flash rusting either. And then I'm going to set the head on it so that it can just be there. Got her cleaned up like a baby's butt. Well, and yeah, I'm right now. I'm if you feel in here, I feel right there. I can see there's it. a ridge. Well, it's not even a ridge. ridge. I'm kind of there was, and then this. So when I got here this morning, I had filled all six mm -hmm. one, two, and three. These three cylinders were still had fluid in them, mm -hmm. and so I just soaked up what's left in this one right. and cleaned it out. The I mean, I took the angle grinder wire wheel last night, got it all cleaned up. I mean, I believe these three are free. I haven't moved any of it, but so what I'm trying to do is get the ridges out of there so mm -hmm. that when it does move, it doesn't rip it doesn't the rip rings, the rings out. out. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, because there was, I mean, I'll have to show you the video. It's pretty sc scaly. It was pretty bad. What I'm trying to do here is get all the rust pits and everything out of the cylinder wall so that when I go and actually get it to turn over and crank, we don't ruin the rings when the piston moves up and down. This one and these two needed a fair bit of scraping and polishing. I just kind of hand scraped and wire wheeled and then I got this little uh, round stone that I'm using just to kind of gently break off any of the rust buildup so that uh, it doesn't come in contact with the rings. Hopefully it'll work. I guess we'll find out, right? All right, we're gonna add a little uh, acetone automatic transmission fluid to that one. All right, we're gonna use this to shock the cylinders a little bit. Take a piece of pipe, put it over the middle, and then we're just going to smack it just once and then move to another one. put this on the crankshaft nut so we can't move it at all. I think it moved. Oh baby. Let's try to go the other way. It's moving like a sixteenth of an inch, barely, just barely. I'm gonna work it back and forth.
All right, we're gonna pour a little oil on top of each of these cylinders while we work it back and forth. Now we're gonna get the head all cleaned up, at least the bottom side of it. All right, now I'm trying to get the broken distributor right here out of the head. Let's take this carburetor off so we can take a better look at it. I brought the carburetor home. We're going to clean it up and kind of get it gone through so we can kind of fix it up. There's some rust in here, a little bit of rust in here, and I haven't opened it up yet. So we're going to start by just blowing it off, getting all the crap off. Carburetor's a little cleaner now. Still got some cleaning to do on it, but as you can see in there, there's rust on this top choke flap. And then down here on the actual throttle, there's surface rust in the in the cylinder there, and the throttle kind of sticks. So let's pop the carburetor open. See how the bowl looks, see how the float looks, and then we'll probably take this base off too so that we can clean the base up. But start by, we'll start by taking the top off. Mmm, crusty. Well, the float mechanism still looks like it moves. It's a little dirty. I don't see any holes in it, so that's good. That's just awesomeness.
There we go. Probably ought to get the cobweb out of there. Now we got it all cleaned out, we can get that rust out of there. There it is, all cleaned up. No rust. See that right there from about right here all the way to the there kind of looks like a crack I'm gonna clean that up I hope it's not I think it's just a casting imperfection let's just uh, hope for the best here now you can see it a lot better it's literally just a casting imperfection it goes from here up to there. What that means is the cast, this is a piece of cast aluminum. That's why you see all these seams here between pieces. And so what they do is they inject molten aluminum or whatever their casting metal is into a form. And then that's how they create this part. And it can be done with other materials than just metal plastics and whatnot, but, um, many times right where there's two pieces to the cast or to the form typically and they're they're sandwiched together and the reason for that is so that you can take them apart and you have to have a way to take it apart so that you can basically get the cast part out sometimes they're cast in sand sometimes they're cast in you know other ways but um no matter what there's usually always a seam somewhere it looks to me like this line here is just a casting imperfection so it's not a crack because there's like a little raised lip there so that's good glad to find that out float needle actually looks really really good man there's just barely a bit of corrosion on there but it is in great great shape the float itself looks really good it's just got some general corrosion just on the bottom just a general bit of corrosion right in here where the fuel comes in we're gonna it's like this this is this elbow here is free so right here on the choke arm choke lever here at one point it broke right here and so they had to braise this little piece back onto the arm so that it wouldn't wouldn't fall out because typically they're like crimped in there um you see that a lot on old machines where you know little things are broken and you know the fix did the job you know at the end of the day that's the kind of fix i would i would leave i might have cleaned it up a little bit but it'll be fine this carburetor is not going to be perfect we're just getting it cleaned up so that we can put it back to work and see if the machine works see if it, we fix it or not and then if we have to do a full carb rebuild later we will cool floats working so this was not a carburetor rebuild this was just a carburetor cleaning took it apart cleaned all the jets out cleaned all the passages out but this is a zenith carburetor i believe it's an er4-16 
The only real numbers other than what would have been right here, which all it says is Zenith made in the USA. One thing I was curious, I'm, I'm tempted to convert this machine from gasoline over to propane or LP. And I've heard it's not too difficult to do. And so if you've ever done that, let me know. I'm debating on it. And the big reason is, is because propane, not only does it burn cleaner, but it also doesn't go bad like gasoline does. Gasoline, if you don't use it enough, it goes stale. And then, you know, you, it causes problems with, you know, not having, you know, not running well or at all. And so, you know, I have my other forklift that I have is also a Continental Flathead, but it's a four-cylinder. And so the that thing starts up immediately every single time. And I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on doing that. If you've ever done one, let me know. Do I need to change any jets in the carburetor to make it run properly? I know you need to add a, I think it's called a gasifier, um, that converts the liquid propane to a, or the gas propane to a liquid so it can be burned in the carburetor. Um, it's not too terribly difficult. I'm debating on doing it, but we're going to take this to the machine and see what we can do with it. Before we do that, though, we're going to take a look at the distributor. This is the distributor or also known as the lightning maker or the rotor rotary cap or the make it happener or you know the spark maker you name it i'm sure it's got more more names but what it does is it spins and then it sends the electrical signal through each one of these wires out to each spark plug as it fires well this one was broken and I'm pretty sure this is the reason that the machine ended up basically sitting for the last who knows how many years. So, I can buy another one online. They're a couple hundred bucks. But, lo and behold, I asked a friend and he had one sitting around. But this is actually for a four-cylinder. And so, we're going to measure the next here. They look right and find out if we can just basically take the base and put the guts from this one into this one. So, let's see, we got 1.06 is the round part that goes into the head there. 1.06, sweet. That is 1.47, 1.47, so yeah, awesome. The one that came off the forklift had this other port here, but it was never used or tapped into. There's no threads, there's no hole there, and this one does not have that, but they do both have a grease zerk right here on the neck, and they both have the flat basically tang that fits down into the the rod that goes through the block um, through the head so let's take this one apart let's take this one apart and see what we've got let's see if it'll fit I think it's gonna fit All right, so the only difference that I see is right here, when this thing spins, there are six little lobes, six points, that each contact and open and close these points. And so, this one only has four. So I am very positive we can do this. Let's, let's take this off. Let's get this uh, out of our way. Looking pretty good so far. Alright, there's a little roll pin right here. I believe we punch it out.
All right. Assuming this shaft fits in that one, we got a distributor that's going to work. So as you can see, that one was broken right here at the base. Just like that. Set that aside. Let's just slide this in here and see. Yep, it's going to work. Perfect. Sweet. Well, I'm going to do a little cleaning on this one. Get kind of some of the junk out of there. Grease this up a bit. And throw it all back together. And then we're ready to go. Awesome. a minute or two on the wire wheel and that thing cleaned up real nice so to get to putting it back together if you see here on this one there are six points or lobes on this shaft and these are the six points that contact the points six different times while it spins so that it can fire six cylinders as opposed to this one that has four one two three and four and that one spin as it spins contacts the points four times so that the four cylinder flathead will fire and so yeah so that's that's the difference between them other than that they're basically the same A little surface rest here So for right now, we're going to reuse the points card off the forklift itself, but we'll bring the other one just in case. There we go. Distributor. Ready to make it happen. Jump and carry jumper pack hooked up to directly to the battery leads. We're going to short the solenoid, cross over the solenoid, and see if we can get the starter to turn. Woo! Yes! Heck yes! That's the crank pulley right there. Awesome. Nice and smooth. Plenty of cranking power. Guess we better have put this thing back together. I think she wants to run. So somebody mounted this metal crappy toolbox on here and so I think I'm gonna take it off. All right, when I walked up to this machine, I noticed that all the nuts on this hub were missing. And so that immediately makes me think either there's something wrong with the wheel, the hub, the wheel bearing, or what most commonly probably is the issue is brakes. And so I know for a fact this machine was brought here recently. And so to get it to roll, they may have pulled this hub 
to maybe see if they could free it up. So let's pull it out and take a look at it and see what we find. Well, I don't see any issues at all. All the splines look good, the shaft looks straight. Everything in there looks pretty good. I don't know. I'll have to go talk to him. My guess is he probably has all the nuts somewhere. Um, so I'm going to go see if I can find those. And of course, lo and behold, there they are. And he told me exactly what I thought. They had the brakes locked up and they were trying to figure out how to get it moved. So they pulled the hub to make it easier to roll it. So for right now, I'm going to reinstall these little cones, and then we are going to put it back together. So it has these little tapered cones that slide in to center up the hub itself. All right, that head is ready to rock and roll, ready to go back on. Exciting. Okay, here's where we're at. We've got the block to clean. We're gonna clean it up, blow out all the dust and rust pieces that we can, get it all dry and ready for the new head gasket. The head is clean and we're gonna put a straight edge on it, make sure it's straight, make sure the block is straight. Other than the fact that water sat in this machine, I am really not worried about it at all. We may lose some compression in like this cylinder here, just due to the fact that there was rust pitting on the walls, but everything else should be okay. So we bumped the starter, we know the starter works. And so at this point, it's ready to start putting it back together. The little uh, clicky clackety electric fuel pump does not work. So I got a new one of those. I got some other new parts for it. So we're just gonna jump right in. Start cleaning this up and get it ready for the new head gasket. Walls on the cylinder are pretty scored up. So two, five, and six were the absolute worst. And they were the ones that were actually seized up. We're gonna run a hone through them and just try and get some of the high spots knocked down so that, you know, the rings don't absolutely get destroyed. I know the right thing to do here would be to take this whole motor apart. I'm not doing that, not, not now. I'm trying to get this thing moving, trying to get it started. It's not worth doing that at this point. So let's run the home through it real quick and see what we get. All right, we're gonna start by putting a rag down there in the bottom. And the point of the rag is to know that I've gone too far once I hit the home. I only wanna hit the areas that have been kind of messed up. So we're gonna use one of these triple stones here and we're going to use some just engine oil and then you just 
just start going. Try this uh, flex hone here. Let's see if that helps. Almost there. Let's do that again. There's our cylinder. So you can still see some pitting, but it is way better. And to be honest, it's going to be fine. We're not looking for an amazing runner here. This was one of the bad ones, too. But we've knocked down all the high spots. This see this cylinder here is perfect. Which this cylinder, this cylinder, and this cylinder are all perfect. This one, this one, and this one are all three of the ones that had the problem of uh, the locked up rings. So yeah. All right. Now we're going to work on cleaning the cylinders and the cylinder head location so that we can get it nice and clean and ready to ready to be put back together and yeah i know i shouldn't be using paper towels but this is not a high class repair here this is a let's see if this thing's worth its time repair and it is it'll be worth it i know it borrow this over real quick get this thing over to top dead center and which top dead center is where number one cylinder which is always closest to the fan is all the way at the top hence top dead center So this is what top dead center looks like on the motor. So this cylinder here, this cylinder here are perfectly at the top with the valves closed. Yeah, if you look at the blog here, it looks completely different than when we opened it up. Just crazy. I'm excited to put this back together. Old head gasket had a pretty bad damage. Corner right here when I removed it. I messed it up, so unfortunately I can't reuse it. I wanted to until I messed it up. That's all right. Got a brand new one. Now we'll get the new gasket set on. And the only thing that's important is that this hole be right over this hole here for the distributor. Because the distributor goes through the head right there. And so what we did is we got the surfaces all clean, oil free, and there's no sealant that goes between this head gasket and the head itself. So perfect, get the head, put it on.
each one of these studs is going in with some high temp thread sealant. So these are studs that have a top mount for mounting accessories. So I'm doing those first. Just so I know I get them in the right holes. And then the other studs will go in all the rest of the holes. And this is why I cleaned the threads on these bolts since we're reusing them. These flatheads don't put as much pressure on the head bolts like modern engines do, and so you can reuse the head bolts. This machine is a late 70s model heister. So I had a couple bolts here started just to line everything up. All right, now we're gonna torque the heads. 35 to 40 pounds, we're going to start about half that and work our way up. Forty. So the dots just mark each one of the bolts that's been torqued to spec so that I know which ones I hit. Just a simple paint marker. Doesn't matter the color at all. I've got copper anisees on the shaft where the distributor goes in to the head so that we don't have the same problem. All right, so what I had to do here is just take the bottom flange of this bolt off because it was coming in contact with the distributor here and making it so that it kind of bound up a little bit. And now it should work a lot better. There we go. Now it doesn't bind up on the bolt head right there. All right, this is a little hold down clamp. Goes on the distributor like that. It allows you to tighten it down, but then loosen the nut, and then you can just turn the distributor when you're going to set it at the right point. Carburetor's ready to go on. Thermostat housing. So the water temperature sensor here broke and I couldn't find exactly that one but I happen to have this style so I'm gonna go ahead and use it because it's only gonna be for a short time the plan is to add a set of gauges this machine only has a fuel gauge and an hour meter it has four light up sensors on the dash but they don't actually give you any, any feedback as far as like what PSI everything is All right, here's the water pump going back on. So we need to gap these spark plugs to 0.025 with a wire gauge. So that's this one here. Currently, they're a little bit high. I'm sure there's a better tool for this. But it'll work fine. So you want the gauge to just 
barely fit through. Even slightly catch a little bit. So we'll do that the rest of the to the other five. And we'll go put them in. We'll put in the missing part that ruined so much of the motor. The motor is completely put that back together. Oh baby. I think somebody broke a tip cleaner in there. So I am ready to rock and roll home and guess what? I'm driving this baby home. <laughs>